Come on, we know you're out there. Somebody click on. Good morning. Hey, there's number one, numero uno visitor. And number two, well, great. Good morning. And welcome back to the Art of Fire Facebook Live presentation. I'm Bruce. I'll be doing your narrating and filming today. And uh, so today's idea is uh, gift ideas. So uh, it's that time of the year, so it's a great time to pick out a gift for someone special. And don't forget, you can order gift certificates too. If you don't want to pick out the piece, give someone a gift certificate. At, uh, contact us at artoffire.com or 301-253-6642 and we'll help you out with that. Good morning, Bridget, Diana, Lynn. Hello, everybody. Good to have you with us. Yeah, everybody check on in. Hey, yeah, Matthew, it is a good morning. It's a great morning and it's sunny out. A little chilly, but hey, it's warm in here. That's right, Matthew. Okay, so uh, let's see. Gift ideas, that's what we're promoting today. But before we get started, I'd like to mention that Carol Ann won the gingerbread ornament. So congratulations to Carol Ann. Just after checking in, she gets that good news. Unless uh, perhaps Theta had posted it earlier. And the giveaway for next week is going to be one of these diamond ornaments. In fact, this particular one, okay? And this is something new in the studio. So uh, we'll be showing you that just a little bit later. So our lineup today is to show you a perfume bottle with stopper, which is always a great gift. A uh, cane ornament, uh, we had an order for that. A wall pocket. Uh, so this is like a, a little planter type thing that hangs on your wall, a rondelle, fragrance diffuser, and a diamond ornament. So let me run through what we have here for you. So we've got the pieces numbered again, and a couple weeks ago somebody had a great idea, took a screenshot and said, I want number four. And so that's really pretty cool. So we'll go through these real quickly, but if you want to communicate with us and let us know exactly what you want, we got you covered. All right, number one over here is a beautiful diamond optic ornament with red, white, and green in it. Number two is a Fritz swirl, multiple colors in there over a white base. A uh, pink and white uh, ornament here that's been blown into optic mold. That's why it has those straight lines on it. The number four there, I jokingly just said we would always call that ornament number four because we didn't have a name for it at the time. And there it is again, a beautiful gold tone. Those are done with a special type of glass that never comes out exactly the same, but uh, very, very close. Number five is a uh, red base with a swirl on it. Six is a cranberry ornament with, again, the optic ridges in it, but they haven't been twisted or monkeyed around with. Number seven, you've got a beautiful uh, background color there, the uh, special loach glass is what we use, and it's got a trail over it. Here's a gold with the trail on it, and number nine, the same type of thing. Then running across this front row here, we've got our new diamond ornament. So these are becoming really popular. So uh, we've got number 10, a uh, cherry red color, a multicolor for number 11. The purplish color on 12, 13 is a multicolor again, and you can see these by the number. Number 15, interestingly, has a uh, swirl pattern to it where it was blown in an optic mold and twisted. And number 16 is a basic gold. We're also going to have the wall pockets today. So I mentioned that during the intro. This is what they look like. So it hangs by this... Uh, strap up here on the top that is part of the glass hangs on the wall really really nice we're going to do fragrance diffusers we sell those and they come packaged with the reeds you're going to have to come up with your own uh, special oils or whatever you want odors you want to diffuse through the house we're going to make perfumes uh, and stopper today there's a couple of samples these were custom jobs that uh, were done sometime in the past and Foster's going to demonstrate uh, the pretty much standard one we have. Uh, if you're interested and you're not Carol Ann and won the uh, gingerbread ornament, you can order one of these. These are the gingerbread faces. Last week you saw Todd do the angel's wings and an icicle. And here's another sample of our diamond ornament hanging. These are new this year called snowballs. Uh, 
It's a crackle finish where we have green interior on this one and a white overlay and then the glass is crackled. It's actually plunged into cold water and blown out. Here's one in red. We've also got the elves, the other popular elves, okay. Uh, let's see, Jen is asking how much are the reed diffusers and Theta told me earlier and I'm not finding the price. So you know what, Theta's online with us and she's going to tell you how much the reed diffusers are. And as soon as I develop a memory or get a piece of paper and a pencil, I'll be able to tell you. Anyway, we've got the elves here and those are a new development this year. Uh, somebody ordered a blue one. We do typically do the reds and the greens. We'll do any color you want. And the pickles. We had a whole episode having fun with the pickles a week or a couple weeks ago. We've got our diamond optic ornaments and our filigrana ornaments. And all of these are on display on our website, artifier.com. So check that out. Uh, we're not going to do any Christmas trees today, but here's a selection of the Christmas trees back here. And of course, the snowman, always appropriate for the season. We're going to do a rondelle later in the broadcast. Uh, not this particular one with the multicolor on it, but uh, Todd will be doing a nice one with a uh, chunk of cobalt blue, I think, either cobalt blue or violet. So uh, that's pretty much the, the idea of what's going on there. So uh, Foster has left the building, he and Elvis. He hadn't actually left the building. He's probably around the corner. He's going to do the first piece for us today, and that's going to be the perfume bottle and stopper. So, like I said, if I had a piece of paper and a pencil, I didn't rely on my memory. Oh, and Barbara Spitzer is watching from Dortmund, Germany. All right, great. Okay. So we've got Germany and Netherlands, and uh, welcome, Barbara Spitzer Dortmund. All right, and Rude, good to see you. Okay, so Foster is making a drip of glass. Actually, what he's doing here, I think he's getting ready to set up to just show you how a simple stopper is done. Is that correct, sir? That is correct, yes. Okay. Yeah. So basically, it was a drip of glass. Is there a chance you might show us another drip and see how it goes? I am going oh, to. Oh, I'm so excited. Yeah. <laughs> so these are, the, these are the stoppers that go into the perfume bottles. And after the perfume bottle is made and annealed, the next day we come back and we go ahead and set the stopper and use a bit of uh, steel abrasive to get a nice set so that the alcohol in the perfume or in the scent doesn't evaporate. Alrighty. So what we're going to do is take a uh, take a bit iron, a puntal iron, heat it up. We're going to go ahead and get a small gather of glass. That's right, no leather shorts today for Foster. It's a little chilly here. But this is the important part. Watch this drip of glass. And he's turning it so that it doesn't drip suddenly. And now, under a controlled use of gravity, and see him blowing on it to chill it up there at the top, you can see it keeps that nice teardrop shape really round. And as it goes slowly toward the floor, it narrows up to the out to the main body. And that's how we produce the stoppers. So we'll let this take a few moments to cool down. We'll take it off and allow it to cool the remainder of the way. And again, tomorrow, we'll go ahead and set one of the stoppers. I've made one earlier here. Here's a completed stopper that's cooled now. This is what it looks like. We cut it off in this general area here. Each one is a little bit different because of this, the amount of glass on the end of the pony and the heat in the glass determines how far it will drop using gravity pulling the glass to the ground. And of course, the glass being a viscous material, gravity wants to pull that glass to the ground. Alrighty. So this glass is pretty much set I'm going to go ahead and take this. You notice as he turns the pipe, the glass will even move horizontal, 
It'll leave a point straight up in the air. That's because it's solidified from the cooling. So it didn't take all that long. We'll put a drop of water onto it as a point to fracture, and off it goes. Okay, so there he has another stopper. So he's got plenty of choices there, and then one will be used to make a perfect fit with the Perkins bottle he's going to make right now. So what we're going to do for the perfume bottle is we're going to start with a gatherer of clear glass. We'll cool it, shape it, set a bubble into it. And then in the second gather, we're going to pick up violet colored, crushed colored glass, the Frit, uh, a number one size Reichenbach, number 13 for you technical folks out there. We'll heat that up and then roll it back through some white. We'll go ahead and swirl it and cause the white to swirl over the surface. And that will give us our design element as far as the color is concerned for the perfume bottle. Alrighty. Foster's using a slightly smaller diameter iron this time, and that's because this is not going to be a really huge piece. All of our blowing irons are basically three-quarter inch stainless steel, and then at the end of the iron, if we want an increased diameter, the manufacturers put a welded joint into it. So for our standard size pieces, we use about a one-inch iron. Here comes the bubble. That pressurized air moving right out into the glass. Okay, and uh, we can get irons. Well, you can get them all the way up to two and a half, three inches in diameter, but that would really pick up a heck of a lot of glass. Way more than we want for this perfume stopper. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, let's get our next gather of glass. Here we've got the violet colored frit, and we're going to come over and pick up that color into the clear glass. Oh, we got people from all over. We got Cedar Rapids, Iowa. We've got Germany. We've got Netherlands. We've got uh, the UK. I think it was David said a little bit earlier, worldwide blast blowing with the art of fire. Okay, there we go, picking up the violet color. Okay, how hard do you have to blow? Actually, um, I hate to say that depends, but it does, and we don't work very hard at it because we've learned that the hot glass moves and the cold glass don't. So when glass is hot, it's easy to blow into. Uh, we've had people that uh, have qu had questions about uh, breathing issues. Uh, I've taught asthmatics to blow glass. It is not a great effort if the glass is hot. Once it gets cool though, then it's incredibly difficult to blow. So what it is really is learning how to observe the heat and know when it's a good time to blow or a good time to go reheat. Foster's turning the iron now in one spot against the metal table, we call a marver, and what that's going to do is begin to take those white shards of glass and stretch them out into lines. So in a couple of moments, they'll probably take a reheat on it because once it starts to cool off, again, it don't want to move. They put a little air in it there, a little pressurized air, just to make sure the bubble stays in and inflates a little bit. Another twist, sir? Oh, yeah. A little bit more twist. Okay, so the whole idea with this twisting is to get those white shards of glass to stretch out into lines. Most of the action will take, up, take place up near the pipe, and when he comes over here to the bench, and grabs a pair of diamond shears, 
and grips it, he'll twist toward himself and hold the end of the glass, that little ball he cut down there. And that completes the twisting all the way down to the bottom. Well, welcome, Kristen. We're glad you're here. Okay, so now he's got his twist all made up. All the way to the bottom. So all the way to the bottom. Go ahead and heat it, and we'll block it up using the wooden tool, the wooden cup that we call the blocks. They're, of course, they're made of fruit wood. In this instance, cherry wood, which is cut wide, and the wood remains in water for the life of the tool. When it comes into contact with the glass, you'll probably be able to see some steam that is generated from the heat of the glass against the moist wood in the cup or the block. Well, Brian says good morning from Mom's house in Sugar Land. Well, hi, Brian, and hi, Mom. How are you? Hope, hope you're doing well. Why are they called diamond shears? Good question, Bridget. He's not going to use it. So I'm going to pick one up for just a moment. And we call them diamond shears. Well, actually, his are kind of rounded. He's made a liar out of me. <laughs> However, typically we use diamond shears. And I'm going to pick one up off this back bench. Sorry for the lousy camera work there. But as I hold these shears up in front of the phone, you can see that central area where we do the cutting is shaped like a diamond. It also has a couple of uh, grooves cut out in the tip. That's for actually grabbing a hot pipe if you need to place it carefully. So you see us do some of that a little bit later. So the diamond area is what does the cutting. And what this does is bring it, squeezes it right together and snips right through the glass. So there you go, diamond shears. I guess in the future we're going to have to call Foster's oval shears as opposed to oval team. Gob shears. Gob shears? Gob shears. Oh, okay. Is that another one of those uh, terms from Great Britain? No, that's uh, from over in West Virginia. Ah. Those are the type of shears that we use when we're putting stems and feet onto pieces. The curved surfaces of that rounded uh, opening actually leave you less of a scar mark and it's a little easier to get through the process without having a, a sharp spot that needs to be melted out. All right, so, so we've got the neckline. he's cut a neckline in the glass and he's also pulled the piece out a little bit from the blowpipe rather than cutting the neckline really, really close. So what this is going to do is give him a little bit of a uh, a neck on it, almost like a little cylinder at the top. You can see a constriction right at the pipe for breaking it off, and then the glass is tapered down some, and that's where the uh, top area of the uh, perfume bottle will be, and you'll be able to fit a stopper right into that. I'm going to work the shape a little bit more and then flatten the bottom, make an indentation, and we'll do the transfer. There we go. He's using the newspaper to chill the bottom a little bit so it doesn't blow out too much. Once he's got the diameter he wants, he'll flatten the bottom of the piece. He's using the back of the uh, jacks right now, the metal bladed tool right there. And this flattened spot is so the perfume bottle doesn't Kimberly Stern, hi from Elkridge. Well, welcome aboard. Uh, we got the flat spot so that the perfume bottle doesn't roll off the table and spill all over the place. We actually have made beer glasses for friends with rounded bottoms on the glass, and that's so they have to drink the entire 20 ounce beer before they can set the bottle, uh, the uh, mug down. But that's an evil trick to play on someone. All right, Foster is now gathering just a little bit of glass on a small iron we call a punty iron. And the punty is basically got a little bit of glass on the bottom. It forms like a glue joint. 
and that little bit right on the tip of the pipe right there is all it will take to hold the perfume bottle after he attaches it. So let's watch. He cools it just a little bit because it is very, very hot. Now the rotation and the placing of the tweezers or pincers on top of the iron helps to keep it centered. If it's off-centered and it's uh, moving on an eccentric path, it's really hard to keep the thing, get the thing open. So a little bit of water right in the neckline, a tap with the tweezers. Fortunately, we have stops at the end of the bench rail so the pipe doesn't roll off onto the floor and he's successfully transferred the piece. And Jill's from Elkbridge as well. Great, great, great to have you. Let us know where you're in, uh, viewing from and please comment. When you comment, that's what gets you entered in the drawing for next week's giveaway. Next week's giveaway is one of our new diamond ornaments. And uh, please share. When you share, it really helps us. It gets our viewership up and we reach more people and it's just a really good thing all the way around. So Foster is now heating the lip for the opening of the glass. This is probably about the longest reheat in the process. That glass was cold enough to fracture when he wanted it to. Now he's got to get it softened so that it's malleable and he can open it up and shape the top. Well, good morning, Rachel and Gabby from Potomac, Maryland. Great. Eric is from Mount Airy. Yes, Rude, uh, we've sometimes done pieces where we use the same pipe. It's actually one of the earliest skills for the transfer. Uh, ancient Romans used to do it because who needed another pipe for the transfer? But this actually helps a lot. It gives us a much more delicate connection onto the bottom of the piece. So you saw him bring that back after the reheating and begin to open the hole. He's going to be really careful about how far he opens that. He doesn't want it to get too wide. If it gets too wide, then uh, the stopper just falls through to the bottom or we make a bigger stopper. Well, we, we open up the mouth and then we close it back down once we have the top sheet. There we go. So I'm going to take the mouth and turn it over so that it's parallel or flat to the floor, flat to the bottom of the bottom. Okay. And that's why he's just heating the outer end of that gap of the glass right now. No need to heat what's on the punny. You can actually see the heat in this where it's kind of a bright orange color or yellow, depending on your view. It's uh, hot right there, and toward the bottom, it's not. You put a single blade in there because the diameter of that opening was very small, and now he's gonna open it up some, and then as he said, he'll come back and close it down. Or we could leave it like this and make it a perfume bottle for a four-year-old because we know that they all put copious amounts of perfume on the first time they get mom's perfume. <laughs> okay, so he got that uh, cylindrical shape going and now he's going to work on cutting that down some, changing the diameter and make it just right for putting the stopper in later on. A little bit of reheating and then it'll be back to the bench. Once again you can see the hot zone on this. It's where the orange color is. He's giving it a little bit of flare now. We always knew that Foster had a lot of flare. Okay, there he goes with the constriction and there's the top, the beautiful folded over lip. Okay, Yes, David, a perfume hose. That would be about appropriate for a four-year-old. Yeah, we're going to take that, close that down a little bit more. Okay. Then we're going to use the steam cone to go ahead and puff up the top, the ball, of the perfume bottle so it has a nice rounded shape to it. So the steam cone is another uh, cherry wood tool. It's a solid conical shape of wood, and it's kept in the water all the time. He doesn't need it quite yet, so I'm going to pick one up. 
This is a steam cone. And by taking this wet wood and inserting it into the opening of the hot glass, the steam that's created inflates the piece. So right now he's going to cut down the neckline just a little bit. And you can see there's a bit of a sloped shoulder on that. When he uses the steam cone, it will become more rounded. Right now he's flattening the lip on it. In goes the steam cone, and watch the shoulder area, just below the narrow part. See how that inflates? And that beautiful rounded shape is coming from the steam that's created by putting the wooden cone in the glass. Do that one more time. Just to round it out real nice, and bring the piece to its completion. Now again, the stoppers are set when everything is chilled. You can't do it while it's hot, of course. Well, Cheryl, Cheryl, we're glad that you do learn a lot watching these. That's a part of our purpose. He's going to give it a little more inflation. So right up there at that shoulder area, you'll see it pop just a little bit. And if the piece gets misshapen a little bit, he just grabs the tools again and works it out. Here we go, a little more inflation. Okay, there and we go. There's that beautiful rounded shoulder. And he'll probably give it one more heat and a little touch up on the lip. And we'll stick a fork in it. It'll be done. It'll be done. There you go. Stick it a fork in it. There we are. By using the back of the jacks, he's able to flatten that lip area down. And now, just to ensure the diameter, that's why he squeezes the blades into it. There we go. All right, and let's hear it for Foster, a beautiful perfume go. bottle. All right. Okay. Thank you very and much. And as he said, uh, after that is annealed and comes out of the annealer tomorrow, what he'll do is fit a stopper to that opening. So with three stoppers sitting over there, he's going to have plenty of choices to take that off. So he's come back over here to the, we call it the knockoff box. And he's just going to let it fall into that uh, insulated board right there, then pick it up with gloves and put it away. Alrighty. There's the finished product. Beautiful. And now into the annealer. We have just a few moments when we can uh, take care of those things and put them away. There we go. All right. Thank uh, you very much. Okay. Why don't you come on up here with me, buddy? All right. So uh, we're once again Joshless today. He had uh, something else to do, something he needed, and that's fine. We get by. Uh, unfortunately, you're going to have to watch me attempt a cane ornament. That's something that Josh normally does, but somebody's ordered one. And I'm going to be turning the camera over to Foster in just a moment. And uh, I'd like to say that I can imitate Josh, but unfortunately I'd have to lose about uh, 30 years and 60 pounds and grow hair to do that. So. Could we post a video showing how the stopper is fit? Yes, Jennifer, we'll make a note of that and see that it, uh, that it, we do it. So let me find Foster here. I'm going to go ahead and get set up with that stuff. If you want to take the camera, maybe run them through the routine over here. All right. Good morning, and uh, thank you again for being with us. Uh, we see that we have a number of people. We're quite international now. We have um, 
somebody visiting from Germany. Uh, Rood is there in Holland. Michael's probably there in um, in wherever he is over there. And um, Josh is, or excuse me, Bruce is going to be doing a cane ornament. We have our different ornaments here for the holiday and for all year round. We have the elves. You saw the elves being produced a week or so, a couple weeks ago. We have the pickle that Todd had done before for us. Our snowballs, our new diamond shaped ornament, the icicle, and the angel wings that Todd had done for us as well. And then we have the we have the gingerbread cookie, and that again is uh, that goes to who wins last week's uh, selection. And then this next week, uh, this week, or next week, we'll come back and we'll find out who is the winner of the diamond uh, of the diamond ornament. We've got a couple of wall pockets here that uh, that Todd will be making after Bruce does his cane ornament. So let's come on back here and see what's going on in the hot shop here. So we're getting the knockoff tray set up. This is where the ornament is going to be set up or knocked off and then the hook will be put on. Bruce has got the what we call the pie dividers. They're a tool that measures the canes that are put out on the ceramic plate. Here we have red filigree or white filigree with the red canes. Todd's going to take these and put them into the glory hole to start heating them up. In the meantime, Bruce is getting a gather or wrap of glass on the end of the pipe that he'll use to pick the canes up. Now he's got his first gather or wrap of glass. He's holding it up slightly above himself and he's blowing into the pipe. And with that heat, it blew a hole through the glass so that we're making what we refer to as a collar. He's using the back of his jacks to smooth that glass off. He put the tip of the jack onto the inside to make sure that there was no obstruction. And now he's going to measure the diameter. Just a little bit with more heat. Yeah, he needs to get that diameter just a little bit smaller. So he's going to heat it up in Todd's glory hole while Todd's heating up the canes which are on a ceramic plate. Here comes Bruce back to cool and shape that glass a little bit more. He's going to check it again in the pie divider and that looks, he seems to be pretty happy with that diameter. And this ornament is being made for Jen Johnson, and we hope that you're enjoying this, Jen. So Todd, Todd just brought the canes on the ceramic plate out of the glory hole. He's going to squeeze the canes together. The idea here is, is that when glass heats up, it sticks to itself. We want to make sure that the canes are stuck to each other all the way down their length. And he's going to go back into the glory hall and heat once again. <clears throat> he's going to pay attention to 
repeating. He's going to pay attention to the glass canes, taking the heat closest to us and the furthest away from us, which actually will be where Bruce will pick the canes up. All right, here we go. Todd's brought the canes out. That's great, Todd. Bruce has the glass on the end of the pipe or the moil. He's picked them up off of the kiln shelf, which will now be put onto another bench to begin cooling down. And Bruce has these canes that have been picked up on the end of the pipe. Now he's going to spend a little bit of time <clears throat> working on those canes so that they come together. You wonder if the was a little bit big, and I actually reduced it some, but we have ways to try and adjust that and bring things back together again. That's correct, Root. This is the Pastorelli, the ceramic plate. And And Bridget, what, why the kiln shelf? Because the ceramic plate will not, uh, will hold its heat and the glass will not stick to the ceramic. Here, I got that. Thank you. All right, here I just helped Bruce Get that door closed up a little bit so that the heat is more intense. And you don't get too much heat in, just enough heat to get the canes to move, to begin to touch. He's using the tweezer-like tools that we call the pincers to manipulate the glass, to manipulate those canes. The pincers are, if you will, the glass blower's fingers. They're not crooked. And they're, <laughs> and they're not crooked. Now Bruce is going to use his jacks or his puncellas to come down the length of the cylinder of the canes. This is going to bring the canes all the way together so that they touch. I'll accept critique from anyone but Josh. Josh, if you watch this, close your eyes. <laughs> Josh had some other th business to take care of this morning, so he's not with us. So we're doing a doing a great job helping helping fill in for Josh while he takes care of business, and Bruce is doing a terrific job picking up these canes and manipulating them in preparation for or to make a cane ornament. Now, once we get this all together, you'll see Bruce take his jacks and about halfway down the length, after a little bit more time, we're going to close down into the middle of that length. Those are what, Bruce, about eight inches in length? Yeah. Yeah, about eight inches in length, those canes. He's going to make an indentation about halfway down that cylinder of those canes now that they've been worked together. And the bottom half that's the furthest away from us is going to be taken off and put into the annealing oven 
for use a little later on. Now, when we use the when we use the jacks on the glass from time to time, you'll see flame on the inside or on the exterior of the glass. This is not from the steel, but from the wax that we lubricate the steel with. And we use beeswax to lubricate the steel of our tools so that the steel rides along the glass rather than scratching the glass. Now here you can see where we're making this indentation. I'll get those boots. We're not quite there just yet. Okay, again, you can see the heat at the end of the canes here as Bruce chokes the cylinder of canes with his jacks. And what he's going to do here momentarily is go ahead and take them off, on, knock the bottom section off of what's on the pipe, and we'll, we will take that and put that into the annealing oven. So he's using his combination shears to chill that decreased diameter. He's going to go ahead and hit the pipe and there that bottom section came off. Unlike Josh, I won't put it into my bare hands. Thank you, Josh. There you That's go. That's for another one later. Now this goes into the annealing oven where it's going to stabilize in temperature at, at 900 degrees to 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Thank you, Bob. <clears throat> and here we are back to Bruce with the with the closed off section. This, Bruce makes this look easy. <laughs> now, I'm, I'm gonna reveal the mistakes right now, because a lot of people tell us they like the educational aspect of this. That's so true. if you can focus right up in this area, Foster, as I turn, you'll see the canes are separated right, there. a little bit That's there. That's because this diameter of the collar was too large for what I'm doing. That's correct. So I'm trying to close that up, but if there's a little air gap right there, when I try to blow it out, it won't work. So I probably took about an extra four minutes just monkey around with that if I had bothered to get the collar the right size. But as I've often said, it's not what you make, it's what you can fix. And that's been a motto here with Bruce in the studio. For well, that's the... because I make a lot of mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> Mary Beth Morgan says you're doing great, Bruce. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to that jack line I cut. And I'm actually going to push it back toward the pipe a little bit to help it seal at the pipe where that separation, that V-shape is. So by going right here and pushing back toward the pipe a little bit, that's going to make sure that it's... That's done. Now I'm going to see if it's closed at the other end. And it's not. There's probably an opening on that end. Yep. Someplace. That's where we cut it. So, so he's it up. We'll go ahead and close it up. Jen Johnson says that it looks like a piece of candy. Yeah, it does. And it's just a wonderful, wonderful material. I'm gonna get that really pretty hot. And, and then when I take it back to the barber, I'm gonna point it downward so that that tip is rolling against the tabletop and an effort to close it up. It's pushing. 
And if it gets off center a little bit, I'll fix it. Almost there, Bruce? Almost. I'm probably going to use the back of the gun to the rest of the way. Okay. So, Bruce was just saying he's going to use the back of his jacks to bring this these canes that are closest to him on together. There's just a very small separation someplace there. Ah, that was wrong. You have a little bit of separation. I'm going to flip this up and you'll see it right here when I flip it. See that little gap right there? That's a problem. That needs fixing. So are you going to marvel this out then, Bruce? Uh, I think I'm going to try the newspaper first. Okay. Bruce has got a piece of damp newspaper that he's going to squeeze around the glass, or what we call the parazon. And squeezing that glass together should theoretically close those canes. Now so I'm going to use the barber on it a little bit. Okay. So, we have a number of tricks up our sleeve. As Bruce likes to say, it's not what you can make, it's what you can save. And he does a terrific job of saving pieces from time to time. Because a lot of times, he does it right. Although we're not used to doing the cane work, but we've we learned so much from Josh, who's the master of working with canes, as well as Todd and jo and Bruce. You're at, you're superb at working with canes. I know that you don't give yourself a whole lot of credit. But you, but you really should. I'm going to touch it together a little bit. Okay. All right. Bruce was saying that he's going to use his pincers, the tweezer-like tools, and squeeze these together here. Now he went ahead and grabbed a, what we call a blow hose. The blow hose attaches to the end of the blowpipe and then we take the other end with the mouthpiece <clears throat> put it into our mouth and this way we can inflate the ornament by just blowing into the tube end of the blow hose came off the end of the pipe. That's why you saw the jerking motion. I was going to help Bruce put that back on, but he's got this all under control. paper again to cause the canes to stick together. He's slowly inflating the canes using his jacks to work on that neckline to make sure that it's nice and chill in preparation for the knockoff as the hook goes on. Now, the thickness of the canes is such that it requires a lot of reheating because the glass is not very thick. Consequently, it loses its heat quickly and loses its heat, which translates to what we call viscosity.
So we thank you for sharing, commenting, and liking us here at the Art of Fire. And Bruce, and Todd, and Theta, and myself. There we go. That's excellent. Good deal. All right. So here at the Art of Fire, our clear glass that's in the furnace is a mix of different oxides that we put together. It's roughly 75% silica sand, 15% soda ash, and 10% limestone. And we weigh out all these different materials to a precise formula that's thrown into the furnace and melts at a temperature of 2250 degrees Fahrenheit. And then we work the glass at a temperature of 2000 and 30 degrees to give us the viscosity that we desire. There's still a little opening in it. We're going to blow this out a little bit more. Okay. It'll be smaller than the standard ornament, but uh, there you go. Cool. Hello, Joe Marshall from Little River, South, South Carolina. Thank you for being with us. Jen, this is great. We can't wait for you to get your ornament as well. And Kara Sex says, fantastic job, Bruce. All right, we'll cut that down. All right. So, we're just about ready to take this off the pipe, and then we'll get some glass to make the hook and put it away into the annealing oven. Yes, Jen, the main glass furnace is on all the time. There's a reservoir of 400 pounds of molten glass, which is the equivalent of roughly two cubic feet of molten glass on the inside of that furnace. And we keep that heated all the time. That's right, Rachel. This is the cane that that Josh and Bruce made last week. We're going to go ahead and take this off here in just a moment, and then Bruce will go ahead and put the hook on. He's going to use his shears at that decreased diameter. Take that off. I'm going to get a glove for Bruce. So here's the clear glass on the end of a punty or pontal iron. Now again, Hot glass adheres to hot glass. It's not quite a punty. But we're going to cut that glass. Bruce is going to take his pincers and take that glass and turn it back over into itself to create a hook. Now he's got a further hook that he'll pick that up with. There we go. There we go. <laughs> and here it goes into the annealing oven. Bruce, that's excellent. Thank you very much, sir. Terrific. Hey. Sweet. So, Angela, you've made glass beads working with the torch and the glass rods. We still have the same inherent properties working with the canes and or the glass in general that you have used in the past making 
making your uh, making your beads. You have the inherent properties of gravity, centripetal force, the ductility of the material, and of course, most importantly, the experience of the glass blower. So, Bruce, I'm going to pass this back over to you. Okay, what a terrific job! Thank you so much. Sure thing. And I think it's Jen Johnson. Uh, thanks to you. Okay. She's going to get that order. Oh, okay, doke. Well, we'll uh, we'll work on another one here in a minute too. So anyway, that was a perfume bottle and a cane ornament. Todd's going to make us a wall pocket now. Yet to come after that, the Rondell fragrance diffuser and the diamond ornament. So be sure and contact us, artofire.com or 301-253-6642. And any of this can be yours. So uh, these are the new diamond ornaments here along the front, numbers 10 through 16. I'll stand back a little bit so you can do a screenshot and then expand it and tell us which ones you want. We've got lots of other ornaments, a variety of styles. You saw the perfume bottle, okay, and we've got the diffusers yet to come. We're not doing the snowmen today, but there they are back there. Those are $99. We've got an assortment of Christmas trees, and most anything we have can be made to your color specifications, probably size two, given certain limitations. This is what you're going to see next, the wall pocket here, and Todd will be making that. And uh, we don't have them hanging up today, but don't forget the lovely t-shirts we wear are also for sale. Well, not exactly the ones we're wearing. Uh, even washed, you probably don't want them. But we do have new ones if you'd like to order one. So Todd's going to be making the uh, wall pocket here for us. He's going over to the furnace to gather. And uh, I'd like to say thank you for watching. And uh, here we go. What color will we be using, Todd? I'm going to use an old transparent mix. We used to call the original spatter beds. It's about 14 different colors, um, all transparent. Ah, okay. So here's his first gather. You can see the bubble expanding out into it by blowing and pressurizing the air column in the pipe. The air has no place to go but out into that hot glass. Somebody asked us earlier about uh, uh, was it hard to blow. At this stage, no. Once that glass gets to looking clear, it'd be darn near impossible to expand it just with your regular lump power. Probably even compressed air, but we haven't tried that yet. That might be along the lines of the Rupert's drop. See what we can do with that. So with this second gather now, you can see how much heat there is in that, and he has to keep turning the glass to keep it under control by going into his multicolor frit mix there and rotating the pipe as he taps it. The small shards of glass attach right to the hot glass he just gathered. Any more old school terms that are not used anymore? Wow. We'll have to think about dunce. that. Dunce. Oh. You don't say dunce anymore. Yeah. Oh, we're talking about glass. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Harlot. You're not talking about Jack Black. <laughs> All right. So just as Foster did with the perfume bottle earlier, Todd is twisting the glass against the marver, and uh, that was so hot that he got his twist basically all done in one heat, and now he's back to the bench using the diamond shears to grip the glass down where that little ball was and continue the twist. So that was all done clockwise, as opposed to Wittershins.
Did you not hear that before? I discovered a new word. So we always joke around here about Foster and his anti-clockwise. Anti-clockwise. But I don't know how it happened, but I found that there's an old Scottish term which actually means against the sun, moving contrary to the motion of the sun, which would be clockwise in northern latitudes. Boy, did you really think you were just going to hear about glass blowing today? Yeah. Anyway, there's this old Scottish term called Wittershins. So that's that's it. Now there, there is an old term that's no longer in use. <laughs> I wonder in the Southern Hemisphere if they have a problem with clockwise motion on sundials. <laughs> okay, here we go. Cutting the jack line for separation from the pipe eventually. It's at, yeah, Mary Beth Morgan, that's it. W-I-D-D-E-R-S-I-S-H-I-N-S. Wittershins. And you can see how much inflation he got out of that due to the heat in that ball of glass. Cutting a gentle taper now. This will be the top of the vessel. It'll be cut in shape there. But typically when we make a piece of glass, we do the bottom half or two-thirds of the vessel first, and then we finish the top of it. bit of that airplane propeller motion. Todd and I are really into that, he being a former navigator, me being a retired air traffic controller. We like that prop wash thing. <laughs> so now this will flatten one side. So if it's a wall pocket, it's got to fit against the wall, but he only flattens one side as opposed to two, which we do on, say, our uh, flasks or other types of pieces. And that's what's going to allow him to hang it up against the wall and hold whatever you like. So the lower, well actually probably the lower two-thirds of that is finished. So all that will remain is to putty it up, attach it to the putty iron, take it off the blowpipe, and then start opening the top. given Foster some instruction of how he wants the pipe held. Notice that it's not exactly dead center on the bottom because that would show. So now Foster's got the piece on the punny iron and he goes up to the glory hole. It's still wiggling around because it's hot. So he's getting in there and now Todd has to heat the top of it to, uh, to open that up some. So you can see as it's turning there's a real uh, interesting thing going on with the balance there, and that's where the experience of the glass blower comes into play, because it's basically one half of a vessel sticking up on one side, so just keeping it sort of straight is a real challenge to the symmetry, and then the heat, of course, makes the glass move a lot more. use the jacks to increase the size of that opening and you can see the way it's flipping around like that that's simply because of the flattening but uh, when I've had students that are turning a piece and they've got a what's supposed to be a symmetrical piece and they're turning at the bench and it's not it looks kind of like a wounded duck and that's exactly what this looks like turning around but it's not because he's made it off he's doing it off center it's because one side is a lot larger than the other. 
So, let's see what's in store. A little bit more jack work, stabilizing the glass. Picking his spots for where he's going to cut this. And this is a really interesting technique, the way that he gets the, uh, the, uh, it's not a handle, I guess strap is what you'd call it. Yeah, the strap cut and brought on around and attached to the rest of the piece. So when it's hot, the glass can actually be cut. It's not much different than cutting stiff cardboard. In fact, it's actually even a little softer. Now, in a normal trimming, we would have taken that glass and cut it off. But as you can see, Todd has deftly turned it around and created a strap by which to hang it. And then taking the end of the cut piece and uh, attaching it to the body, He's now completed the strap. He'll come back over now to flatten it to get a nice symmetrical shape, and so it will lie flat against the wall. He's also going to stretch the strap just a little bit so it's away from the wall hanger. And there we go. Beautiful. That's really cool. So the, the really slick part of that is that strap thing, how he figured out how to not cut the glass all the way off to leave it attached and bring it on around. Now a little bit of water on the joint between the putty and the piece, and then a slight tap, and into the annealer it goes. Let's hear it for Todd. Thank you, Todd, that was cool. Yeah, that's really neat. <clears throat> so, if you'd like that one, order it. Artoffire.com or 301-253-6642. Send us an email. Uh, no carrier pigeons. But this is what the finished product looks like. So you can see right here where the cut was made and then how it was brought around and attached. I'll try to change the angle so you can see the edge. And that's where that piece was brought on around. So there we go, wall pocket. So we've covered the first three items. We're getting ready to move to a rondelle. Uh, I believe Todd told me he's gonna be using cobalt blue. We'll double check that. But uh, he's gonna be making a rondelle and then we'll be moving on. So recall that we covered all this earlier, but a quick review. We got our snowball ornaments. You're not gonna see one made today, but you can certainly see one online or on camera if you like to rewatch the video. Those are really cool. They're made with a color core, and then, uh, yeah, they're white over, and then the glass is actually crackled. It's broken in clear, cool water. We've got diamond optic ornaments. We've got uh, cane ornaments. we got multicolor ornaments. we got ornaments you can't even imagine. And, of course, a little <laughs> later, you're going to see our new diamond ornaments. And a shout out to Romero Camarillo who made the mold that we use these in. And that will actually be an instance of using a mold to create the finished shape. Most of the time we use a mold, it's for decor decoration, okay? Optic molding for decorative purposes. In this case, the entire piece is formed in the mold. So we've got our ornaments back here along the row. You can order any of these by referring to the number seen the perfume bottle made earlier. There's a couple of uh, more elegant samples right there. And we have the uh, diffusers, which you'll also see in a few moments. If you're commenting, you're going to be entered in a drawing for this diamond ornament right here. So that would be really cool. So keep the comments coming. While you're at it, please share. I don't want to sound lonely, but you probably have more friends than we do. And if you share with all your friends, we're going to get seen by a lot more people. I'm kidding. Okay, so that's what we have going on there. Let's go on over and visit Todd. Todd, did you tell me it was cobalt or violet? Cobalt. cobalt. Okay, awesome. And a little uh, 
optic impression in it? Yeah. Okay. The smoke pattern on this one. All right. I like the smoke on the cobalt. It's just really nice and fine. It's the cobalt blue. So Fiva just showed me that Marjorie somebody Marjorie Merriweather Post yeah used to have glass wall pockets in each of the rooms in her home it back in the day mm -hmm. and she had the help um, had the maids put different fragrances into those wall pockets each week oh okay very interesting yeah, who knew that it was very interesting to learn truth is stranger than fiction so in addition to the scent diffusers you're going to see later on if you want to spread some really interesting odors around your house take one of todd's wall pockets and put some fresh lavender in it okay. or any other herb that you like to enjoy Never mind, we're not going there. What's the approximate height of the snowmen? Uh, Barbara, they're about nine inches tall. And the Christmas trees, some of them are a little bit larger. Uh, they vary a little bit. So Todd's gonna take his next gather of glass here. He's got the cobalt pour. He's gonna gather a sufficient amount of glass to spin this out into the plate. But right now, he's gathering a little bit at a time clean spot on the marver, he'll give that glass a little bit of shape. So the shaping is very important. If we let the glass get too long or leave it too short, the bubble doesn't flow out well. So we typically go for about a two and a half to one diameter to length ratio. And what that lets the bubble do is come out nice and even. If we want it uh, all even wall, like Todd just did, we make it just about a one-to-one -one ratio. Bridget said she loves her copper ruby rondel. She posted a video the other day of hanging up and glittering in the light from the tree. Wonderful. That's really cool. And I would like hearing how people are either displaying the glass or getting use out of it. Hey, if it just sits in a dresser or or something, it's not doing anybody any good. All right, so Todd's now going to let this cool a bit. Were he to gather immediately with the interior of that still hot, the glass would collapse. The bubble that he's already blown out would reduce and shrink. It might disappear completely, and it'd be kind of like starting over. So he's taking this time right now to find the blocks and other tools that he wants to use for completing the process. So here we go with another gather, and again, this is over top of the cobalt blue. That's the central core, that's the color piece you saw in marvering that's down in the middle. And now he's got uh, a good sized gather on the end of that. He's going to keep control of the shape and use a block to shape it. And what the block does is gives it a nice kind of pear shape. We call that section of the glass uh, the parazon. So anyway, by getting this kind of shape, it optimizes the blowout. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> good, not good. <laughs> Better, best. Ted Scott, oh well, back to work. Okay. Yeah, tune back in and watch the whole video. You'll see uh, Romero's mold in use. Now Todd rolled that on the marver for a moment because he didn't want the bubble to blow out the bottom of the gather. So by cooling that just a little bit, he kept that bubble under control. Now while he's marvering with the iron horizontal, that gives him a better shape to work with. And we go back for another reheat. 
optics now or another blowout? Yes, indeed. So see the taper that he put in that is going to accommodate this 12-point optic mold. And in case there's somebody watching that had not heard us talk about this before, the optic molds are so called because they basically put an optic impression in the glass. They uh, give us a design element, if you will. Todd's going to put that down in the mold, blow real hard, and when he comes out, you'll see the ridges in the mold. And there they are. So that's created the optic impression. Sometimes these are called dip molds because you just dip into them, get your design element, and then go on about your business. This did not form the finished piece. This obviously doesn't look like a rondelle. So Todd's going to work on inflating this, getting a jack line cut into it. We call it a jack line or a neck line. For some reason, we love to personify our glass. We refer to the shoulders, the waist, the lip, the mouth. So, uh, and the feet, yep, the feet. Uh-huh. You can see that blue core expanding in there and getting more of a spherical shape. So this is kind of how we would also shape a bowl, okay? A piece that's basically shorter than it is wide, or then that's what we have as a bowl. So this allows him to keep the construction really compact, and then after the transfer, it'll flare out beautifully. So in this case, since he doesn't want to really elongate it, he's not going to come out and give it that propeller spin. We're not going to do any of that. We've got to keep it nice and compact. When a glass blower blows with the pipe held horizontal, you can see the glass does not lengthen, all right? It gives a much more spherical shape. So if we want a sphere, we blow horizontal. If we want an elongated bubble, we point the glass downward. And if we wanted to collapse it even more, we point it up toward the ceiling. We chill the bottom just so it doesn't blow out down there. You can kind of see a little bit of extra thickness in the bottom, and that's by design so okay. that it doesn't come apart there. It makes that a regular size. Oh, I'm sorry to step down. Okay, I'm going to get out of the way while they do the funny. So keeping that thick spot in the bottom is a really good idea. It keeps the glass from breaking there, especially when you take it off. Here you go. So Foster's forming up the putty, which as you can see, is just a little dollop of glass on the end of the iron. And what that'll do is stick to the bottom of the piece, and it'll hold as long as we need to, as long as we don't let it get cold, and then we'll break it off when done. Todd puts it on there, gets it centered. Foster's careful to hold the iron level so that Todd can judge true center. If the piece is moving around a little bit, he waits a couple of seconds, a little bit of water right into that jack line he created, and then it'll be a tap on the pipe, and it breaks free. Foster immediately goes to the glory hole, even though the punty is still hot. See the piece wiggle a little bit. So as long as it's moving like that, it's still pretty hot. It'll require short heat, which we call flashing, and now he's going to heat the part he needs to work, which is the opening. And when he comes back to the bench, we'll take a little shot of the end of it, and you'll see just how narrow that was. So that glass was cold enough to fracture. It takes a little while to reheat enough to manipulate it. Todd will every once in a while push the whole piece back into the glory hole just to warm it. Then he'll pull back and heat that lip area. There we go with the personification again. So now look how tiny that opening is. In fact, so tiny, he only got one jack blade in to start, which is really a good sign. Gives him a lot more glass to work with. There we go. Okay, so now you can see him opening it more and more. And eventually he's going to bring this out to where it looks like it's got almost straight sides. And from that point then he'll start the 
rapid turning and the centrifugal force that makes it into the rondelle. You can see from the orange color where the heat's located. I've handed him a pair of what we call parchofis. They don't scar the glass, they don't take as much heat, and this is what's allowing him to open that diameter, maintain the heat in the piece. The paddle evens the lip out a little bit. So he's getting the doors open. We'll come over here behind him a little bit. You can see how the constant turning has brought it out into a disc. And by turning really fast, that's a lot of experience with Hot Wheels when he was a young man. And there we go. A beautiful rondelle. Excellent. And the optics that give that great visual presentation. Foster's gloved up. We'll put a drop of water on there and tap it free and Foster will put it away. Beautiful. And that would look really nice hanging in your house or I believe it was Bridget said earlier you had a copper ruby one that's hanging and reflect reflecting tree lights. Well the blue one will do the same thing. All right, let's hear it for Todd. Thank you, Todd. Way to go. All righty. So, let's take a look over here what else we got to do today. Aha, there was the rondelle. We're going to do the fragrance diffuser, which is this right here, okay? Um, these are different probably than the colors that Foster's going to use to do this, but they come with the reeds. And as we just found out, I think uh, it was probably Patrick Frost that gave us the information about uh, Marjorie Merriweather Post. Yeah, and uh, you time. can use the diffuser with oil, or if you prefer dried herb, go right ahead and put that into your wall pocket. Okay, so now we're going to do a fragrance diffuser. All right, what's up, guys? Todd's going to do the fragrance. Todd's diffuser. going to do the fragrance right. diffuser. Yeah. Cool. Excellent. Okay. So while he's getting some color set up, that'll give me more sales opportunity. I'm kidding. Anyway, but we'll give you a rundown of what we got here because I'm sure that you're going to be interested in it. Again, remember that anything you see here, you can order online or call us at 301-253-6642. Uh, we'll be happy to take your call and place your orders. So right here in the front row, we've got the diamond optics, okay? We have a variety of colors here. We have these numbered, so if you'd like to order any particular one of these, simply refer to the number and let us know which one you want. They're $42 each, $42 each, okay? They are really cool, a lot of fun. Over here we have the wall pocket, and you saw that just made moments ago by Todd. There's a couple different colors and designs. Again, if there's anything here on the table or in the catalog that you see, you like the shape or the style of the piece, but perhaps the color's not quite right for you, don't let that stop you. We've got, we got lots of color back here. We've got a series of the round ornaments back here, and I'm going to just scan them quickly so that you can see the numbers associated with them. If you'd like to order any of these, you can contact Theta right now or later. Now would be better. Somebody else might beat you to it. A lot of people are really fascinated by that number four, okay? So uh, we've had we've had a bunch of them go out here. I made quite a few yesterday. All right, we got the perfume bottle and stopper. 
which you saw made uh, right out of the box today, first thing by Foster. We've got our snowmen, and we can do the black hat, and we can do the Santa hat. We've got uh, Christmas trees over here, and most of the, yeah, they have a little stand on them, so they'll stand up. Don't forget the gingerbread ornament, okay? Those are really fun. They're, they're pretty cool. And uh, again, Carol Ann won one last week by commenting. This week's prize is going to be one of the diamond ornaments. Is he ready? Okay. And we've got our snowball ornaments here, and then a whole variety of here. And don't forget the pickle. If we've still got our uh, viewer from Germany, we've uh, established that that's an old German custom. So thank you for that. All right, so Todd is going to do the fragrance diffuser. He's picking up a gather of clear glass right now. And uh, this frit over here, Todd? Yes. Okay, so yes. he's got this frit combination. What's in this one? This is a little salmon pink, um, teal, green, a iris gold, cranberry, and a dark teal, so a light teal and a dark teal. I call oh, this a cool. Mix. So Todd's got a lot of specialty yeah. colors that he mixes up, and he's got a really good eye for this. In fact, underneath this marver here, you can see all these jars. Now, some of them are color duplicates with different size fit, but for the most part, they are all different combinations. And by selecting just even a couple of colors, you get some amazing effects. So we're really fortunate to have him doing that here. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, so another gather now, and then probably through the frit. And again, you can see how hot that is and how much it wants to fall if he stops turning. So he won't. <laughs> Not only for a moment, just to show you. But notice how he's got that nice even rotation going around as he taps the frit onto the hot glass. You like Todd's shirt today. That's from Brian Holcomb. And that's just everybody else's shirt. <laughs> it's not what I normally do. Uh -huh. Thank you, Brian. <laughs> okay. Well, you're for a high yeah, time. Yeah, Foster's okay, wearing the, uh, the, the shirt with the tools. Yeah. Okay. But my name's not Tim. <laughs> Again, by turning the iron, and what's interesting, he didn't leave it in one place, but he got the twist by turning clockwise and moving to the left. And then there's such a little, uh, a little uh, bit of Wittersons in there. <laughs> so here's a, an example of what he has with the colors. So we have these glass jars that are filled with frit. And when he writes the 6 and the 232 on top of it, those are the manufacturer numbers for those colors. But it takes a lot of experience to know which colors will go together well and which won't. He's twisted it at the end now, and he's going to cut that ball off. You see a full twist all the way down. No shout, just twist. Hello, Lively Brothers. Okay. Clockwise in a left step. Yeah, it sounds like we're doing a, a line dance in here or something. God, let's don't start that. <laughs> Todd will be marvering this out a little bit to get the shape, a little more twist to it. And then to chill the bottom so that when he blows, the bottom doesn't get too thin. And you can see how that bubble is inflating inside there, and the tip is still conical shaped. And that's because of the cooling he did. I want to see if you follow me over. 
Only so far. They don't be sitting well, on a. In general, no, they, they, these cameras don't do the I fall and I can't get up commercial. Okay. So now, with the thick bottom in the piece, he's going to bring this back down to a taper. He's going to start getting it more cylindrical and then a bit of a taper to go into the optic bowl. So all of this is just uh, setting up the uh, decorative aspect of it. Is that table metal? Yes, it is. Yep, it's uh, stainless. It's stainless, it? it's stainless, isn't it? The marver, stainless. Yeah, stainless steel. Yeah, Mary Beth, we do use the under the marver for storage simply because it'd be a lot of wasted space. In fact, Foster's sitting on one over there that has a whole bunch of optic molds stuck underneath it. So uh, there you go. But but we don't we don't put two or three shelves on them. Okay, he's going into the optic mold now, blowing, and you'll notice that this one has fins in it, and it's going to come out. It's still got the ridges, but there's so many more of them. A much more delicate look. Actually, we're not looking so much for a slimmer marver table. Uh, glass blowers like to have as much marvering room as they can get because sometimes we make pieces that are a couple of feet tall and we want to be able to fit the whole thing onto the marble. Todd's cutting the jack line now in this, making a point of separation between the blowing iron and the glass, and then he's going to stretch it out again. See how the neck's elongating? That's because the diffuser has a short stubby neck on it. So now by gripping it near the main part of the body, you can see him elongate that. He'll refine the neckline for where it's going to break free, and then off he'll go. So while he does that, let's go on down here and just for grins and giggles, take a look at the size of Marver, and Marver is related to marble in French, and this is a marble Marver, but this is all the space that Foster had to Marver on when he was doing the Renaissance fairs to begin with, because he wasn't going to take one of these uh, four foot long metal beasts in his uh, Dodge van. <laughs> okay, so here we are getting more of the shaping. See how uh, he pulls against that body, and he doesn't squeeze real hard there. Now, that inflated a little bit, he'll refine those lines some, and then he'll do his. Uh, flattening and they'll do a punny transfer again and I was in the way on the last one so I'm going to walk around over here so in this case Todd's got uh, a lot of this piece done he's holding it up in the air so that collapses back some and then when he blows with it pointing up it doesn't elongate the piece. He's using the back of his jacks right now to flatten the bottom. Then he'll probably take a short reheat. Foster will form the putty and we'll be into the transfer. Plus the largest piece AOF has ever done or commissioned. Probably about, what, 30 inches tall? We put a couple 30 inches away. Okay. So now we've got the punty. It's attached and in the bottom, at the middle. Todd gets the placement of that like he wants. Drip of water right into the jack line, creates a fracture point. And off we go. Margaret says, I sure am comfortable bantering out information. It's Margaret's your mother, right? Uh, it's from Brian. Oh, it is. Yeah. Hey, Margaret no. is your mother. Yes, that's correct. Yes. Is, is 
Is that because she just has a polite way of saying I talk too much? <laughs> oh, no. But that's what we're supposed to be doing, is talking to the people. Oh, and, okay. Yeah, bantering out information, meaning oh. you really know your stuff. <laughs> Which you do. Mothers, mothers have interesting ways of putting things. Uh, on the marble marver, I'll get back to that as far as the color of the goblets in a minute. Right now Todd is shaping the top of the fragrance diffuser. It has to be wide open enough to, uh, oh, Theta answered it. Okay, good. That's, that's way better. So anyway, it's, it's got to have an opening large enough for the reeds to go in and then the top is folded over a little bit. But I was starting to tell a story about my mom because she had this way of saying things without insulting you. And if I would suggest something really stupid, all she would say is, that's an idea. No judgment, good or bad, but whenever I heard that, it was I knew it was back to the drawing board. <laughs> okay, so now you see the constriction and the flattening of the top taking shape. Where is our shop? We are just outside of Damascus, Maryland. Uh, mailing address, I believe, is actually Gaithersburg, isn't it? Post office-wise. Yeah. Uh, we're not far from Laytonsville, Maryland. And we're actually on, what, 7901? Right. Hawkins Creamery Road. So, that's us. That's us. It's on our website too. You can locate us there. You can use Google Maps. You can uh, you can go to the local Shell station and buy a map of Maryland and find Damascus and Laytonsville and all that stuff. All righty, there we go. Nice, beautiful. Nice color. Notice how those beautiful colors show up in the optic ridges. Magnificent. A little bit of water to separate it from the putty iron. Thank you, Todd. You're welcome. Nice. Prettiest little creamery in Maryland. Yeah, we actually uh, had some pictures at one point from the family that had this as a dairy farm. And uh, really quite interesting. And I'm going to step back here in the studio a little bit. When Foster and Theta first came in here, this was, had been, a dairy bar. And you can see all the windows over here where the uh, cows used to hang their heads out, I guess. I'm not a farm boy, so I don't know all of that. There's a barn door at the end, which we've replaced with glass. And we've got actually barn doors down here. And uh, Foster pretty much built this whole place. Got the concrete poured, built all the equipment, all the metal shrouding you see. Uh, we've rebuilt the furnaces a few times, but uh, all the equipment, so uh, we're really grateful for him having gone to the UK to learn how to do all this and blow glass. Okay. Foster's doing, Foster's going to do the uh, five-sided diamond? I guess. Uh, I don't know. We didn't discuss that too much. Oh, never mind. Some, Forget what some, I said. Sometimes when we go fly by night, we, uh, we're not exactly sure who does what. Bridget was asking about the... Oh, black, Bridget black was asking. I'm sorry, the what color? The black iridized. Black, okay, black iridized. There we go. And that was off of Foster's Mini Me Marver. Okay, so let's see. Next is the diamond ornament. Okay, yep, it's a perfect place to create. Okie doke. So uh, we've pretty much run through everything on there give you a quick view of some of the pieces that are hanging here and that we've made. And uh, again, we're not trying to make excuses, but of course sometimes we goof things up. And uh, like I said earlier, when I was doing the cane ornament, that's not something I normally do. So it's a little bit wonky, but the next one comes out better. Foster is going to be making the diamond ornament. So let's take a look at this. Let's put the uh, mold up on the marver here, Foster, for a moment. Can we put it up on the, on the, yeah, just so people can get a good look. So this is what Ramiro built. 
and it's in these two halves, okay? And it's a five-sided construction. Three of the facets are on this side over here, two over here. So we get it in a position about like that. A dollop of glass on the end of a blowpipe is dropped down in here. The mold is closed up and held tight, and whoever is making the piece blows into that mold. And when they've blown long enough that the glass is expanded out into the sides of the mold, it's simply separated, the piece is brought out, and then the neckline is refined a little bit more, it's dropped in a cradle, and we put a hook on it. So that's the mold, and thank you so much, Ramiro. Okay, Romero Camarillo uh, made the mold. Romero's been coming around for quite a number of years, and uh, he's a good glass blower in his own right. Foster's getting this set up right now, and uh, is Todd going to control that for you? Uh, yes, I believe so. Okay. So Todd will be the one to hold them. So this is an example of a mold that creates your finished shape. So there's not much for the glass blower to do after it comes out of the mold. A stationary mold. A stationary mold. As opposed to a rotational mold. Okay. And what we're talking about there is, you notice when we went into the uh, uh, optic molds, we didn't rotate the pipe or turn it. If we went into a mold that was making a simple cylinder, say something like a, a wine bottle, we would actually put the glass down into the mold and keep it turning continuously as we blow. In this case, we won't do that. Obviously, all those ridges and angles would stop it from moving. Okay. So this is where the teamwork comes I'll in. in. Todd will operate the handles Close on that. Close it up. Yeah. Kind of blocking your view right there, but as we explained so, when I had it up on the... Yeah. So what Foster and I are discussing is, first he wants me to close it. Then he wants me to... So we gotta get that right. Okay, a two-step <laughs> process. All this right. Is, we we got a country western band standing by for the two step. This is for me. This is uh, I just come later. Okay, so Foster will be gathering up the glass. He'll be putting it through this frit right here, and uh, I've only made one of these myself, and I got stuck for just a moment in it, even after the door was open, because the heat of that uh, glass against the metal makes it stick just a little bit. So sometimes it takes takes just a little bit of encouragement to bring it out the rest of the way. Okay. Have you used it since Romero I have it, not uh, used it since it was redesigned. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, it is. And it, it fits very well together. We're really tickled with it. Okay, so Foster's got his first gather of glass. He'll got establish a bubble in it. And then he'll take another gather in a moment, gather, get some frit. When he fixes the glass up to put into the mold, he's basically just going to make like a sphere. It's going to be a spherical shape, and it'll have a little bit of an elongated neckline so that it'll drop right into the mold. When the two halves of the mold come together, there's a very small opening here. So that opening is what will close around the glass that's hanging from his blowpipe. That's open, right? That's huh? open. This is open. I want to that make sure was I get this right. Yeah, this yeah. Technical open. terminology here. Yeah. And this is open. No, that's closed. Yeah. All righty. So Foster now is going to gather up his frit, melt it in, and we'll all wish him a lot more success than I had with the cane ornament. Uh, and me with the diamond optical. <laughs> Okay. He's got the frit melted in. He's going to twist it up a little bit. He'll be heating it a little bit more and then blowing it out.
So if he cuts the jack line too close to the pipe, the glass doesn't hang down into the mold. So that's always a trick in something like this, is to make sure you've got that. So he's going to get a volume of air in that, and then after his next heat, he'll probably begin working on shaping of the glass. He's taking, taking a quick look to see what's down there. Are you you're looking for spiders? Uh, oh, yeah. okay, or snakes? James <laughs> Spiders and snakes? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Lions and tigers and bears, oh my. Okay, so now I'm going to get his jack line on there and some separation from the pipe. So that extension that he made right there away from the pipe is what he's going to take advantage of to hang down into the mold. So he's doing a little test here and seeing if he needs just a little more separation because we can always cut glass off. But if we're too close to the pipe, then we're too close to the pipe. But he's got that just about where he wants it. Then he'll step up onto that box. Let me get this neck So you can see that he's shaping that neckline out a little bit. And that's going to give him a really good spot to hang it right down into that opening as Todd closes the doors. Oh, we could do. Uh, Close the pot made we, worse. We time. could do uh, Game of Thrones. Hodor, Hodor. <laughs> wow. And you didn't like my spiders and snakes. Huh? Here we go. Foster gets it into the mold. Todd closes the door. Foster blows like crazy. Todd opens the door when Foster asks. And out he comes, and there is your diamond. Beautiful, Foster. Not bad for a first timer. Okay, let's get a good look at this. Yeah, nice, awesome, okay. And that's how we use the mold. Okay, so now Foster's gonna get set up over here to cut off the ornament. Tap his pipe, break it free. I'll take his pipe, he'll go gather for the hook. A little bit of clear glass drop right up onto the top of it. He'll thin it out by pulling up a little bit. And then once he cuts it, he'll create the loop from which it will hang. And you can see that glass is wiggling around, which is really kind of nice, because if it stiffens up too much, you can't create the hook. And there we got it, a beautiful hook on there. He's going to put on a glove. Get the old handy dandy dragon hook. There we go. And we'll take a real quick close-up of that. Beautiful. Thank you, Foster. Mm. Somebody asked about the color combination. Um, That's a Florida. We call it a Florida mix. It's a mix of blue and pink and peach and a little bit of purple, some teal, and turquoise. There you go. So that's that's it right there. That's the mix. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay, so let's see. Let's wind this thing up here. All righty, so once again, here's what we've got and what we've made. You just saw the diamond ornament right there. A wide variety of colors to choose from. You place an order, you can pick whatever colors you want. If you want one of these, simply refer to the number. I'll run down them again, 16. Well, you can read. A lot of variety there. 
We have our standard ornaments. We've got diamond optics. We've got trails on them. This number seven and number eight and number five have beautiful trails wrapping them. We've got the snowball ornaments available where we put the white over an interior color. If you don't like the red and the green we use, pick another. We're happy to do it. We've got the wall pockets here. So there you go. In addition to random plants, put some herbs in there to create a nice smell. Uh, Carol Ann, congratulations on winning the gingerbread ornament. And those of you that have commented will get another chance to get one of these, okay? So uh, I wouldn't hold out waiting for this. We've had quite a few viewers today. So go ahead and order one if you really want it. And then if you win, you'll have two. Uh, we've done the fragrance diffusers here. And let's see, what else? Oh, we got elves, we got pickles, Christmas trees, snowmen with Santa hats and black hats. We've got the gingerbread ornament there. So that's it. And we'd like to thank you. And uh, have a good week. We'll see you next week from the Art of Fire. So long.